just one subject on everybody's lips. And that is that the capital of these United States has got to be located in the South. I thought so. It'll be a fight to get it. Well, it'll be our last fight, Tom Jefferson, if you don't. You don't know how they feel about it down there. They don't care about anything else. And they don't talk about anything else. If you don't swing this, Jefferson... Your goose is cooked. I've got to swing it. But we can't get it without Hamilton. Fine chance we have of getting him. He'll stand out for New York, of course. But we've got to get the capital for the South. We've pledged ourselves to our party. And if we don't get it, we're done for. I've heard him talk. And I know. Hamilton would have great influence with Congress. I think we'll have to try a little persuasion. What? Go begging to Hamilton? Well, perhaps we'd better pay him a friendly call. Well, count me out. I guess it's our only hope. Hamilton's word would have great influence with the president. Now, we can only make the people believe that the secretary of the treasury ain't been playing fair with the nation's money. Maybe we'd have the whole country in our... Betsy. My father, what's the matter? I've had news from London. It's Angelica. Tell me. Yes, Betsy, your sister's worse. She needs you. But her husband's there with her? Yes, but he writes me. She's always calling for Betsy. Oh. Alexandra, I must go. My dear. Yes, I must go to her. When is the next boat? Tomorrow morning. The William Pitt sails at early tide. Oh. You ain't fond of Alexandra Hamilton, are you? No, I ain't. And you'd do any darn thing for a $10 bill, wouldn't you? <laughs> well, just so long as there wasn't anything dishonorable, Mr. Roberts. And there was only a way to shake the people's faith in him. Pretty hard to shake the people's faith in Hamilton. I know it. See, Mr. Roberts, have you ever thought about... I sit down. No, no, no. No, no, Alexander. No more work tonight. Come with me. A little spree, eh? <laughs> what do you call a little spree? Mm. A little spree. <laughs> ah, your American girl. Uh. More ravissant. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. Mrs. Hamilton is charming, mm. but she is away. She is away so long mm. and you are lonely. Yes. I'm lonely. A little spree. You think I deserve it, eh? We are all of us human. <laughs> a little spree will do you good. Come, come. No, no, no. No, I cannot tempt you. I'm afraid you might. That's why I say good night. They want something. From what Tom Jefferson said, I think it's about the location of the capital. Oh, the residence bill. Well, where do they want the capital? In Jefferson's parlor, I suppose. Exactly. They want the capital of these United States to be in the South. Well, why not? Well, you mean to say you'd let the capital of the United States go to the South? Well, where do you think it should be? Where? Why, Albany, of course. <laughs> your hometown. <laughs> in your parlor, I suppose. <laughs> no, no, General. Certainly not Albany. Why, certainly not Albany. I suppose you want it in New York. No. Seriously, I think it should be an entirely new city. That's an original idea. Where? Oh, somewhere central on the Potomac. Ah, oh, the Potomac. You think it should be in the north. Why? Why? I'll tell you. In the first place, all our country's great and glorious traditions cluster about the North. There's some truth in that. It was here in Philadelphia that the Declaration of Independence was signed. So it was. It was in New York where Washington took the oath of office. It was in New York where the government had its beginning. And as for Albany, why, Albany commands the commerce of the four corners of the earth. Mm -hmm. And there isn't a blame but a reason why the South should have it anyway. That's there, Jefferson. Send him on row. Call him to see you, sir. Uh, sure. Uh, Mr. Jefferson? I'll send him Monroe. How do, Hamilton? I want you to sit down. Mr. Hamilton, we've come to have a little chat with you. I'm at your service. If our business is private, I should mention the General Schuyler is on the balcony. Oh, not at all. I've already mentioned to him that we wish to speak to you about the location of the capital. You know the residence bill must be voted on without delay. I understand that immediate decision is necessary. I will not disguise from you 
that I consider the geographical position of the capital a very vital matter. A very vital matter. We know you will have great influence with the President in arriving at a decision. That decision, gentlemen, is a very grave and serious matter. But I think we should have no difficulty in reaching an agreement. I am pleased to find you're willing to meet us in the matter. I've gone into the matter very seriously, and I've come to the conclusion that there is only one possible location for the capital. And that is... Albany. Oh! I think I heard my father-in-law calling. Had you any other place in mind? Hasn't the South as much claim as the North? Certainly not, sir. The South could not possibly be considered. What? What's your reason for the North, except that you're a northerner yourself? Why, gentlemen, all our country's great and glorious traditions cluster about the North. It was here in Philadelphia that was signed that immortal document from your hand, Mr. Jefferson, the Declaration of Independence. What's that got to do with it? It was in New York that Washington took his oath of office. It was there that the government had its beginning. And there's, not a, there's no reason on earth why the South should have it anyway. But the South will put up a mighty stiff fight for it. Is that your final word, Mr. Hamilton? My decision on this matter is just as irrevocable as your decision regarding my assumption bill. Excuse me, I'm sure I have General calling. Did you hear what he said? Do you think it's a bait? He means he'll support us if we back his bill. We can't do that. It's against all our principles. We've got to do it. We dare not let the capital go to the north. The whole party'd be against us. Forgive me for leaving you. Although I fear, gentlemen, our interview is at an end. Uh, Mr. Hamilton, I've always found that in settling arguments, it is necessary to give and take. Precisely. To give the least and take the most. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, in regard to the capital, I have a proposal to make. Won't you sit down? Oh. Mm. Since we cannot agree upon the selection of a city, why not build us a new city, founded on the ideals of liberty and fraternity? <laughs> That's certainly an original idea. A new city. On the Hudson. No, not on the Hudson. On the Potomac. Halfway between the North and the South. I'm sorry, Mr. Jefferson, but my decision is irrevocable. I think you said as irrevocable as our decision about your bill. Did I? I think I did. Suppose we make a uh, concession. Strike a bargain, do you mean? Oh, I, I wouldn't care to use that word, Mr. Hamilton. No, then we won't use it. We call it concession. Suppose we uh, pass your bill in return for the capital. Gentlemen, this is really a surprising proposal. I'm afraid I must have time to think that over. You're a quick thinker when you like, Mr. Hamilton. Yes, and I like the proposal, but it seems to me that I'm getting the worst of the bargain. Our oh. uh, concession. We're offering you something you've been fighting for for years. Can't you give me a week to think it over? A week? Impossible, Hamilton. Uh, three days. No. This must be decided now. We've pledged our word to the southern states. You've pledged your word? Oh. I was not aware of that. In that case, gentlemen, I shall feel compelled to agree. Ah. Shall we put it in writing? No, I think our oral pledge will be sufficient. Uh, your word is your bond. In fact, gentlemen, I would rather take your word than the bond of almost any state in the Union. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Good day, Mr. Hamilton. Good day, Mr. Jefferson. Senator. Are you Alexander Hamilton? Yes. Oh. It's very late, isn't it? Were you just going to bed? I think I was. What do you want? I want money. Money? But why have you come to me? Why, I'm an American. It's quite close. I... Why? I don't know what's come over me. I feel so faint. Have a glass of water. 